Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The last stream of the year. I won't be going live tomorrow. Tonight is the last live. And tonight is going to be the giveaway for the good old Vector Candle shirts that we got going off here. Remember, we got the EXO candle right there. We got the red. We got the violet. We got the blue Vector Candle shirts. They are Lacoste shirts. I have worn these, but I've washed them. So, yeah, don't worry. You ain't going to get no chest hair on those bad boys. <laughs> With that being said... We're going to be doing that live reveal or the winner will be revealed very shortly in the live stream. But we're coming towards the end now. We're only going into good news. That's what they think. Word on the street says that this ETF is going to be a sell the news event. Does that mean we're negative? Well, no, it's just... It just means that buy the rumor, sell the news. Let's get the ETF because, listen... Once the ETF does get approved, all right, now we need people to buy into it. That's what we need. That's when the true flavor of Bitcoin's worth comes into play. How many bankers are going to be engaging in the idea that, yeah, maybe I'm going to put my money in this ETF? So we're going to be diving into that tonight. More importantly, we're going to be talking about a few plays that have happened. Now, this time of year is a little bit funny to trade. You got the big boy stepping away from the charts, sitting back, drinking pina coladas, and you got 90% of retail staring at the charts, trying to make a buck or two. We're going to look into certain assets, which actually show that it's, it's a very tricky time to be trading. But you want to be using this time to finesse your execution. That's what it's all about, because you ain't going to make any money in trading if you don't understand your execution. What's your risk to ruin? How likely are you going to blow your account? That's the question you need to be asking yourself, not if a wedge or even a moving average or the rec vector candles are going to come into play, whatever system it is you are using, because you know that the end result of a trade is going to lead to money gained or money lost. So we don't need to worry about making money because it's not like, you know, if you start, for example, you start a YouTube channel with a concept, what happens? Well, you don't know if people are going to catch on to it. There's no guarantee that it will. They either will or they don't. But you know that if someone catches on to your idea, then it's going to work and you're going to flourish. The same thing can be applied in trading. But you've got to do the right steps. You've got to execute properly. And that's where time and screen time comes into play. So we'll dive into that very shortly as well. I'm going to be talking about a few setups that I put out today for the Platinum members. I'm going to be doing a giveaway for those guys as well. But I'll be talking more about that very, very shortly anyways. So, seeing as it is the last live stream of 2023, we're going to dive into what Bitcoin's been up to today. And I apologize for not going live today. You can probably hear that my voice sounds like shit, but that's another story. Let's get with the flavor, ladies and gentlemen. And let's go out with a good old bang, as they say. No, I'm not going to tell you about that story. But anyways, here we go. So, what have we got going on here, guys? Bitcoin not really doing much. So... Today was quite interesting for price action across the board. So for the Platinum members, we shared these projections today. We had one explaining what was going on in here and how you would be able to try and catch reversal points from these specific zones in the chart on Bitcoin. OK, and we got into this one right here, which was my day's projection to see Bitcoin come down beyond the 42451. That was a projected zone and anticipate a move back up. But the star of the show for me had to be Euro. Euro completely ripped it today. So you had to take a bit of a wide stop zone for Euro. But the idea was that Euro was going to come down to take out target one and target two. Going into Euro, she actually did do the numbers and cleaned target one. And from the point of projection, they would have netted themselves roughly around 46 pips. Now, what had happened is Euro came down to snap up to come down again. All right. And it looks like it's on its way towards target two. But given that there's not really anything happening tomorrow in the marketplace, I'd be very cautious about taking advantage of, you know, just trading overall. It's the last day before the market's fully closed. Cryptocurrency doesn't close. I get that. But this is the legacy markets we're talking about. OK, so that was awesome for the guys that managed to take advantage of that. Gold also did very well, I believe, if I'm correct. 
Gold managed to come down as well, took a nice slump to the downside, nearly taking our target, but gold is more than likely going to clear that target range later on tonight. And then, of course, we had Ethereum looking towards that target of 2,308 from this move stop run, which is an FTD play. And then we go into Ethereum right now. You can see Ethereum's done pretty much on its way towards that target point for later on tonight as well. So we've had a nice little flavorsome day for the Platinum guys. Remember, there's a 20% discount. Just use the code SANTA to take advantage of that because that finishes on the 1st of January. You get 20% off all the courses. There's an exo chart course on there. It's really cheap. You can take advantage of it because we did an example today on exo charts where we anticipated the NASDAQ to come down into this zone to initiate a reversal. We go into exo charts and we see that little flavor. They came into it. They come down to nice shorts and then they reversed back up into it. And what you learn in that course is understanding the significance. And it sounds crazy, but the significance of semicircles when it comes to the VWAPs. All right. So go check that bad boy out. Make sure you're using the discount code 20%. Santa It's pinned to the top of the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Now, with that being said, enough of that madness. Let's go and have a look at what Bitcoin ended up doing. So Bitcoin come and hit our projected area 42.5. Happy days. So what do we need to see Bitcoin doing next? Well, what is the topic that I'm talking about tonight? Why is it that they are still coming out with the idea that the ETF is going to be a sell the news event? Well, let's just look at it like this. <clears throat> You got this story here by CryptoQuant suggesting that there are a lot of people right now in good profits with Bitcoin, all right? So whatever happens from now up until the point of the ETF, people are going on the assumption that the ETF will be a sell the news event. But we've got to understand what will likely happen beforehand, okay? This is what I think is going to happen structurally when it comes to the ETF. Now, the last time the word ETF was mentioned about Bitcoin, okay, we saw a phenomenal move by Bitcoin. It shot up. And that was just on speculation. Inevitably, Bitcoin came back down again. Okay? Now, once the ETF does get approved, the one thing that you can't take away from cryptocurrency, ladies and gentlemen, is people's will. You can't take away their idea. You can't take away their hype. You can't take away their, their hope. You can't take away their... Greed, their fear, their optimism, their anxiety, their whatever it is, the, the denial, belief, whatever. You can't kill these people's idea of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, all right? It's like when something good for crypto comes along, happy days, everyone's there like, yeah, back in Bitcoin. So my belief alongside, excuse me, <clears throat> alongside the idea that currently people are in belief. They are in belief that things are good for Bitcoin and they are in big profits right now. My belief is this, that once the ETF does get approved, we're going to see a, a significant snap to grab liquidity. Remember, Bitcoin is a liquidation game. As it stands right now, we've got a bag load of liquidity at two point, what, $2.7 billion worth of short liquidations at the 44,350 zone. We're not too far away from that price point, guys. Don't get, don't mis get mistaken for it. We're not far away. Given that Bitcoin's volatility today, you can see Bitcoin, what, is down 2%. Solana's down 5 Ethereum's down 1.5%, okay? When yesterday, well, a couple of days ago, Solana was up nearly 11 12% in a single session, so volatility is not something that we have a problem with in cryptocurrency. But the sell the news event is no different to whatever happens to any ETF that gets listed. There will be an initial pump. Okay, let's just take this for example. You've got <clears throat> the Ethereum. Where is it? Let me just show you. The Ethereum ProShares Ether Strategy ETF. The day that bad boy came out. Let me just go to the daily just to show you. The day it came out. From the initial open, okay, it pumped to 41 and then came down and finalized at the 40, okay? Then, of course, it just dropped down and then it's gone up ever since. So this is showing that there is sort of promise inside of ETFs because people are picking it up. But unfortunately, the volume is not there. It's only 21,000 contracts. No market cap has been established as such. And that's what you're going to see. So I believe Bitcoin will effectively... Take the move to the upside 
and it will be a fast move, but it will equally be met with a reversal back down because those same guys who are holding onto Bitcoin, which is going on this idea right here. Where is it? Um, what did we actually look at? Here it is. It's inside this article. Okay. It says that to support this assertion, right, that crypto quant anal analysts pointed to data that showed Bitcoin market participants are currently sitting on high unrealized profits after the digital assets rally above the 40K mark. In other words, short term holders are experiencing high unrealized profit margins of 30%, which historically has preceded price corrections. Okay. So that means. Bitcoin is in areas that it shouldn't be. People are making returns that they really shouldn't be making. And this is all on the back of people's hope. All right. So how do you get people to remain in that hope? Well, keep the idea of Bitcoin ETF. All right. And the idea of how much liquidity is going to come into cryptocurrency regarding this ETF. We've already got an outlook on what that ETF looks like. We, cause, because we know if you put all together the ETFs that are currently out there with cryptocurrency, it equates to the sum of around 50 billion. That's not a lot. <laughs> That's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, given that they're talking about $30 trillion worth of wealth could give, crypt give cryptocurrency that exposure. So just think about that for a second. 50 billion isn't much, all right? We need a big piece of that tr 30 trillion. And you're always hearing about people saying, oh, you know, it's not looking good for the ETF or it won't get approved, disapproved. I see you, Sonny, man. Like it's, you know, whether it gets approved or not. I mean, we've got articles going into it like this. Here it is. Well, we got <clears throat> um, the article was right here. So you've got this gentleman here, James, saying that we're nearing the deadline. He's already put out that a delay would not change anything about the views and 90% approval for it by January the 10th. So we're getting already the volatility given to us, okay? In other words, ETF's going to get approved, happy day. So we've already priced in it of it actually being approved. It gets approved, bang. Or should we say it gets delayed, Bitcoin drops back down and then it comes all the way back up again. We are going into some madness in, in the sense where guys who are already in unrealized profits are waiting for that word approval. That's when they will sell. Price will shoot, Bitcoin will go up, but come back down aggressively. That's what I'm waiting for with the ETF. And if the ETF doesn't get approved, well, that's another story. Bitcoin's going to take a shoe bag to the downside. And where is it going to hold out? That's, that's going to be the quick key question. Because right now, 30% profits in Bitcoin. We don't know how much these people are holding in Bitcoin, but they're holding a lot of Bitcoin and they're in a lot of profits. All right. So at some point, they're going to want to be taking some of that liquidity, but not scaring the market too much. And we can see that is evident they're waiting for the ETF because Bitcoin is trading sideways. And ladies and gentlemen, you're probably going to see Bitcoin trade sideways for a little while now. All right. Going into the new year or going even into the actual approval, Bitcoin could just stay sideways. The lower Bitcoin goes, the more inclined I am to believe that they're getting ready to load up as much of it as possible in preparation for the approval to sell into the hype. And then, of course, it comes down. All right. So that's where my head's at with Bitcoin. All right. In other news with cryptocurrency, India has blocked crypto exchange websites in widening crackdown. But don't get it twisted, right? India has a big population. So that's a little bit of a ball lake in terms of, you know, everyone's endorsing cryptocurrency. Like what's going on? Why is in India as an emerging market as such? Why is it not starting to jump on the bandwagon to take advantage of this and get that exposure? They've got their reasons for it. OK, so that's something very interesting to take into consideration. Going into Bitcoin price action, if you can see right now, you're probably not going to see that much activity going into the new year. That's why, because we've got effectively the ETF deadline. That's what it is. And whatever you hear about the ETF going from now up until that point, the only thing you guys really need to act on is the point when it's actually approved or not approved. All right. Don't look for price points. Look for whether it's approved or not. Okay. And once you know where you stand with that, you're either going to get Bitcoin cheaper or it's going to be a little bit expensive for you in the sense where it surpasses 50K. Everyone's on the bandwagon. The ETF gets rolled. And could you imagine the Bitcoin ETF comes out? It turns out to be a flop. There's that possibility as well. But it's going into Wall Street money. And the same thing's going to happen. No different to this ProShares Ether one. Came in. 
happy days, and now it's gone back up. The only reason that all the ETFs are rising right now is on the hype of the spot Bitcoin ETF. There is potential for profits to be taken on these ETFs. ETF comes out, slump. Then we will know the truth about Bitcoin as an ETF. You're not really hearing much about Grayscale wanting to convert their trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF. They've tried to pursue it, but nothing has actually come out about it yet as to whether or not they're actually going through with it. So if it's because it's the SEC not allowing them, then that's one thing. But if Grayscale are not really going through with it just yet, maybe for different reasons. But it's interesting to say to see that nothing's actually come from that just yet. Yes, of course, the halving is one of those big things as well, ladies and gentlemen. The halving is huge, and that's something in cryptocurrency overall. But remember, Bitcoin's price is not going to have any reflection on what the price of the ETF is going to be. We need to understand if this ETF is going to be synthetic or if it's going to be physical, okay? What's more important about this ETF is they're going to be using cash crates, which means in order for banks to get exposure, they got to put funds up and that all those funds are going to be used as collateral to go to intermediaries to buy the ETF or effectively buy the crypto, okay, so that the banks can get the exposure to it because legally they're not allowed to buy cryptocurrency. That's why this ETF is being pushed out there, all right? But what if big people, I hope people are not of the impression that the ETF is going to be the same price as Bitcoin's price. It's got nothing to do with it. Look at ETH. What's this one? What's the price of Ethereum? 2,000-ish. This is $55. Has no resemblance to price. It's got nothing to do with it. Now, this is Exchange Traded Fund seeks investment results corresponding to the performance of ETH. Synthetic. It's all about how it moves. Okay? Look, no earnings per share. You don't get nothing from this. It's just a volatility game. That's what's going to be going with Bitcoin ETF. Okay? This is what we got to remember. This is based on the, the performance of Ethereum. Now, if Bitcoin has lots of... If Bitcoin is slumping to the downside and people are still buying the ETF, they're going to try and associate that. If I don't buy Bitcoin, I can buy the ETF. But that doesn't mean that the ETF is going to be a better place. You're only going to be relying on Bitcoin's performance. Again, it's going to be important whether it's going to be a synthetic or a physical ETF. That's going to be really important. And the only thing that you really focus on is if you do want to get involved in the ETF, if Grayscale gets their trust converted into a spot Bitcoin ETF, bang, you go with Grayscale. Why? Because they're about holding Bitcoin. Their returns are based on the amount that they hold and what their average price is. All right. This bad boy right here is all about the performance, okay? So take that into consideration. I mean, look, this is on the weekly. So if we look at the daily, this bad boy is down today, okay? It's finished down uh, 0.17, not bad. And the last point, price point was $55. We go over to Ethereum and you can see Ethereum is already down 1.5% anyways, okay? So what the ETF will do was avoid traders the exposure of volatility but then again that's going to be another story we won't we won't know until the actual true volume comes into play when it comes into the actual approval of the etf that's that's pretty much my opinion right there ladies and gentlemen okay um <clears throat> No, Dre, listen, it doesn't matter. Listen, if you took the gold projection, it doesn't matter if you got out. It doesn't matter. You made some money of it. Happy days. There'll be another one. Okay. Um, is a shoe bag British slang for a bad thing? I like to keep my dress shoes nice in a shoe bag. All right, listen. <laughs> shoe bag is a term that I make reference to with my daughter. When she's being a little shit bag, I can't really call her a little shit bag. I call her a shoe bag and say, darling, don't be such a shoe bag. And then, you know, naughty, bad. So when Bitcoin's taking a slump to the downside, or should I say a shoe bag to the downside, put that in your trader's dictionary, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, shoe bag to the downside. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Um, Bitcoin ETF should never happen. Comment by Philly. Bitcoin ETF should never happen. Yes, Bitcoin needs adoption, but Wall Street is not why Bitcoin was created. It's not why Bitcoin was created, in my opinion. Wall Street, mm, yeah, store of value. I mean, look, man, 
if you want store of value, I mean, no, 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 go back to it. Berkshire Hathaway, here we go. Is it this one? Yeah. Is that not a store of value? That's half a million dollars for a share. Yeah? Look at how it moves. Calm, controlled, not that much volatility. Half a million dollars for a share, Berkshire and Hathaway. This is what Bitcoin in principle is going to end up at. There's going to be too many people involved in it, holding a lot of it, and it's just going to be a place to move money. That's it. So what we're seeing Bitcoin now is it's cheap as chips. That's why the idea of lower prices in Bitcoin could be on the cards. <clears throat> I mean, this bad boy, God, when was it last? Oh, it doesn't even go back. Can't even go back that far. If we go to the initial timeline, I mean, God, God, it's 1984. If we just go back and back and back and back, back. oh, my God, it's going to be so far away. I can go back like silly hist history on this. But you can see this thing was what? $67,700 as a share. And it just shot all the way up to half a million. So like, look, <laughs> that's probable. But Bitcoin will end up being a storehouse of value. That's it. Okay. All right, then. So one final shakeout at 44.45. There's a massive liquidity zone. Yeah, this is what you're going to understand about Bitcoin and its pump. Right, listen, let, let me give you my opinion, okay? And then we'll get into this giveaway with the vector candle and then I'll let you guys be, all right? What, <clears throat> excuse me, what do I think this ETF's really gonna do for cryptocurrency, all right? In my opinion, it just allows more exchange traded products to be put onto the marketplace so that they can create money from it, all right? There are commissions that are earned when you sell these ETFs, okay? Now, ETFs is another way of getting someone else to get involved in cryptocurrency because this is the conversation that someone will have. They'll say, have you, what's your portfolio? Oh, I'm 60-40. Okay, have you got any cryptocurrency? Oh, I've heard a lot about that cryptocurrency. It's quite volatile, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty volatile, but we've got this Bitcoin ETF. Now, this ETF is based on, or here's a number of companies that are, trying to get uh, off of this crypto ETF. So what's the difference? Well, we've got synthetic ETFs and we've got Bitcoin, physical Bitcoin ETF. So what's the difference between the two? Well, one's purely based on its price. How volatile is the price is going to be determined by the performance of the ETF. Okay, cool. What about the other one? Well, this one's more about how much Bitcoin they actually hold. So, you know, we've got Grayscale, for example, it's got 600,000 Bitcoin and their average entry price or accumulation of Bitcoin is around about 25, 30,000. They're currently in like X amount of profit, happy days. The idea is that these guys are going to keep on buying Bitcoin as it gets to certain price points. You would generate a dividend off that or a return based on how many ETFs you hold. Okay, okay, cool. Um, all right, I'll tell you what. Um, so, do, do I hold the crypto? Do I need anything? No, no, no. You just buy the ETF and it's just put in your portfolio as an asset that you're under management with, with us, for example. That's the conversation that someone new to cryptocurrency is going to be having. Once it gets approved, you're then going to get the what is a Bitcoin ETF. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Everyone's going to mention how and where you can buy it from. And it's naturally going to have this progression of increase or popularity, okay? But Bitcoin will always be Bitcoin and people will still stick to Bitcoin. I don't think anyone in cryptocurrency will be buying the Bitcoin ETF. But when you think about it, it's the wisest thing to do. Why? Because if you're going to get into synthetic crypto, synthetic ETFs, it's going to be based on the performance of Bitcoin. So logic says that if hypothetically Bitcoin's ETF, right? Let's just go to this Ethereum one over here, okay? Let's get rid of this. If Ethereum's ETF right here on the week, well, let's go to the daily. What on earth is this? Reset to today. Hold on. Reset to today. Here we are. Right. If Ethereum's ETF, or should I say Ethereum's price shoots up to 5,000, right? Logically, the ETF is going to increase because this is based on the performance of Ethereum. All right. 
If it's going to be based on how much profit they're earning in their holdings of Ethereum, if we've got a company that an ETF of how much physical Ethereum they hold, all right, you might not get that much of a greater return. So my opinion, a synthetic ETF is going to be for the thrill seeker. Because one day the ETF is going to be down because Ethereum's down. One day the Ethereum is going to be up and the ETF is going to be up. In other words, you're going to be able to pick up more ETF contracts rather than having to pick up the Ethereum token itself. All right? So when you think about it, I just said that I don't think anyone in cryptocurrency will get involved in the ETFs and even buy it. But just imagine if Bitcoin's ETF itself was priced at $50. All right. Takes a slump down to 20 and then starts to climb up. In the meantime, Bitcoin slowly moving up. All right. But this ETF keeps on climbing and climbing because people are seeking it as an alternative. If it's based on the performance of Bitcoin's price, my days, we're, we're talking about what could be an altcoin getting listed and you stepping in at the cheapest possible price. Imagine getting in on Bitcoin at 10 cents. What if the ETF is going to follow that same suit? We don't know. But it will be a cheaper way of getting involved in it. So if we believe Bitcoin's going to go to a million, what the fuck do you think the ETF's going to do if it's going to be based on its performance? In my opinion, the ETF should be the route that everyone goes and gets involved in. Why? Because there's governance behind the ETF. You ain't going to see these wild volatile movements in the ETF because certain there are things in place for ETFs and the stock market that prevent these extreme measures. If the Dow Jones closes down 7%, they stop the trading market. They stop the market completely, all right? And they've done this before. So that's my opinion of what I think is going to happen, man. Like it's, you know, you can sit through the wild price projections of, of Bitcoin's price itself. But if you think about it, Will you be able to buy more Bitcoin ETF contracts or will you be able to buy more Bitcoin? Why would you need to sell your house to get three, four Bitcoins when you can pick up an ETF and get quite a few, a substantial amount of ETF contracts? And if Bitcoin is going to do this presidential run to the upside, you've got a valuable ETF. It makes sense, doesn't it? Logically, it makes sense. You eliminate the BS of cryptocurrency and the manipulation because there ain't no manipulation in the ETFs. They know who's buying. They know who's selling. And there's governance behind it all. That's what the sharing surveillance story is all about. But yeah, <clears throat> what's this? What are you guys saying? How can it be based on performance? Doesn't make sense with Bitcoin. Where's the beef? Where's the profit come from if I've if not from held Bitcoin. Well, look, man, it's, you got to think of it like this. This is right. This right here is based on Ethereum's performance, all right, from the point of it actually being listed. Now, if you've watched how Ethereum has behaved from the point of this, so go to October, where is it? Let's go to October the 2nd, all right? October the 2nd on Ethereum. And look at what happened with this one. So let's go to October the 2nd. Zoom out. Where are we at? All right, then. Here we go. So this is where we are. All right. That is Ethereum. October the 2nd. We're going to mark that bad boy off. OK. Hypothetically, this is when Ethereum's ETF was listed. OK. Ethereum drops down from, let's just say, from this high point, they drop down and she drops 13%. OK. Cool. Now, let's just pull this over here. All right, let's put that there. Bang. All right, then. So that is Ethereum's ETF on the, on the right. Let me just move that there so you can see. It's the hour time frame, okay? So that's the 2nd of October right here, okay? Cool. So it comes down. Now, it drops from 41 all the way down to 36 so not that much of an aggressive drop okay so let's just say about 10 just done about five six percent there or thereabouts okay that's not bad i can take a drawdown of five percent on an etf but 13 percent drop in ethereum that's gonna hurt man like that's gonna hurt 
someone's portfolio, okay? ETF starts to go up, or should I say Ethereum starts to move up, ETF starts to move up. You can see that right there, okay? So as Ethereum's going up, the ETF is moving up. It's quite choppy because there's not that many people trading it. Look, the volume's 21,000, right? But this is all moving up. So as Ethereum moves up, this bad boy performs. That's what the Bitcoin ETF is going to be about. As Bitcoin moves up, again, synthetic or physical, all right? It's either going to, if, if Ethereum's price moves up and it's going to go parabolic, we're going into the bull run, it's going to go crazy. <laughs> Basically, $55 is what you're paying for Ethereum. You're, jump, you're jumping back five years on what Ethereum's price was when it was around $60, $70, whatever it was. Okay, jump back five years ago, three, four, five years ago, whatever it was, okay, you're basically paying for what Ethereum is right now, okay? Because this is what they can do. They can go to the alternative of the ProShares ETF. And if Ethereum's price keeps on going up, going up, going up, then naturally it's going to grab attention. This is going to then be an alternative way for investors to get involved. Look at where we are. It's the biggest milestone in cryptocurrency to have a Bitcoin ETF, spot Bitcoin ETF, with the attention and endorsement of BlackRock. That's the thing. Am I bullish? Fuck no. I am optimistic, optimistic about movement, up or down. It doesn't matter to me. Do I think Bitcoin can go parabolic? Of course I can. There's a supply. There is a limited supply. We don't know who's really buying Bitcoin. We're only focusing on the bigger players. I've got 600,000. Um, your micro strategy, okay? Grayscale, micro strategy, and all the other guys that have got it. There are guys, I mean, look... There's, there's, there's a lot of Bitcoin out there. 21 million supply, 19, whatever. Okay. Is it all going to one person? No, but, you know, it's going to get expensive. Naturally, it's going to get expensive. People call it the biggest Ponzi scam on earth. Okay, cool. But fundamentally, there's going to be a supply. And when you take away that idea of supply, then yeah, maybe Bitcoin is a Ponzi, but it's a supply. And history teaches us that, you know, if there is a demand and the supply just goes out the window, then <laughs> you've got an increase in value. Okay. Um, what else have we got? Um, the ETF is a black horse, Tino. The US government is going to wreck people to have people ask for bans and regulations. This isn't good. BlackRock recommend 85% allocation to Bitcoin. They don't say that, uh, that to about gold. Listen, let me tell you something about gold. Gold has been bought and sold. It's ended up being the, the, the world's bike, okay? Because it's just been thrown about all over the place, all right? You've had China buy the UK's gold. I mean, the UK sold its gold and the US sold its gold. Everyone's buying and selling the same amount of gold. It's just the same thing. It's just who's prepared to buy it at a specific price that it's being sold for. Hopefully, Bitcoin gets like that, okay? Because there is no supply. It's That's it. It's 21 million. We, don't, we can't go into Earth and pull out Bitcoin. With gold, we can, okay? But that's that's another that's another story. Why are you saying that people should get the ETF instead of the real deal? The whole point of crypto is that you can own it and you can have it in your own possession. All right then. Okay. Decentralization, centralization. You start fucking with Wall Street money, welcome to centralization. Okay? Go away from decentralization. That's out the window, right? When you start getting Wall Street involved. And this is what's going on with cryptocurrency. People are sick and tired of saying that they want Bitcoin to go to X amount of price, X amount of price. And we already know that the current cryptocurrency gang, the guys, the love for all cryptocurrency, if we're going to wait for all the 15-year-olds to get themselves jobs so that they can earn enough money to buy more cryptocurrency, Bitcoin ain't going to go to 100K for another 10 years. That's why we're pushing this idea of welcoming Bitcoin by Wall Street. Again, yeah, it's all about buying it and being in the possession of it. Again, the ideal of Bitcoin. What are you here for? Are you here to just hold Bitcoin? Because it wouldn't matter what its price is. You just want to hold a certain amount of Bitcoin and that's it. Be done with it. If you're looking to make money from it, you're going into a big event that could give you a nice return. The question is, are you going to sell it? That's the truth. That's my opinion, you know? Uh, yeah, but yeah, 
Epsilon, I've been using IC Markets for nearly 10 years now, man. I will always stay with those guys, you know? Uh, <clears throat> what else have we got here? Again, it's just, you know, if you want to buy and hold the Bitcoin, again, it's all about my, it's, it's, your, it's your mentality to cryptocurrency. What is your mentality to it? If you're Mr. Decentralization, don't get involved in ETFs. Don't do it. You know, just stick to Bitcoin. I want to hold my own currency. That belongs to me. Done. That's fine. There's no problem with that. My opinion is for the people that can't buy a Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, the accessibility of buying one Bitcoin is not as welcoming as what an ETF is. If you can't afford to buy, for example, are you in a better position to buy 10 Ethereum or are you in a better position to buy, where is it, 10 ProShare Ether Strategy ETFs? Cost you $550 to buy that ETF. If you buy 10 of them, for example. It's going to cost you 25 racks to buy, $23,000 to buy 10 ETH. All right? If it's based on Ethereum's performance... The ETF is way more forgiving than the actual asset you're investing in. I'm about movement. And if from a perspective of risk management or portfolio diversification, if I'm heavily invested in cryptocurrency, that's going to be a bit of pain in the ass for me if I'm witnessing these swings up one minute, down the next. Hey, Solana, doing great for my portfolio. Up 11% one day, down 5% the next. You're just giving and taking away. But if you've got a portfolio that's made up of cryptocurrency and ETFs, this is not financial advice, guys. This is just me telling you ways to eliminate exposure, all right? If you've got ETFs that represent the performance of Ethereum, well, if Ethereum drops down 13%, but you hold a large stack of ETFs that only drops down 3%, you haven't absorbed the full effect of Ethereum's drop. So that's another way of diversifying your exposure, right? The classic example is a stock guy who holds a portfolio of stocks split between various industries. You can have seasonal industries, all right? During times of recession and an economic slowdown, health, aerospace and defense stocks, and retail usually, all right, food and beverages, sometimes end up being as the, the recession-proof stocks. Why? Well, medical will always do business. Aerospace will always have funding. They will always be selling contracts and building weaponry and what have you. And certain food places will always try their best to encourage people to spend money by offering discounts on eating out. So they're still churning money, all right? If people aren't going out spending money, they're going to be staying at home ordering takeaways and what have you all. You, know, you get the idea, all right? Well, if you've got that and you've experienced this supposed drawdown in the marketplace when it was correcting down and all the aerospace was going up. Funnily enough, this was when the Russian war was going and you had the war in Israel and what have you, okay? Now's a good time to start taking some profits out of those medical stocks and those aerospace stocks and now start to get ready to go into cash because everything is overvalued, okay? What I'm saying is it's ETFs and Bitcoin is just a way to diversify your exposure because people that are only involved in cryptocurrency all right, a portfolio of cryptocurrency really need to take advantage of what an ETF can do because you're limiting the volatility that comes with cryptocurrency. It's 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 just a way of seeing things, you know. That's how I see it. Uh, okay, then right. Um, what else have you got, guys? You guys having a different conversation? Can you please, hi bro, can you please show? <laughs> All right, listen, are we ready to do this giveaway? Okay, are we ready to do this giveaway, guys? Because my throat is done. Okay. 
start falling. Oh, never mind, never mind. All right, then, cool. Well, listen, I'm going to give you this, um, the, do this giveaway. And it's going to be the last stream before the new, after the new year, until the new year. So I've got here, okay, I'll do TA on Bitcoin and Bonk just before, once I'm finished with this right here, I'll do the TA, right? So there were 400 comments, okay? And it's been split down to around 394. That 394 comments on the community post, all right? So what I'm going to do is we're going to go over to this number generator, all right? Let's get rid of this. And it's 394. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on tapping this bad boy. And then I'm going to count. I'm going to find out who the winner is, and I'm going to post it on the community post. The person that wins has to reach out in the Traders Reality Discord, okay? You have to reach out to Mike Dutch, all right? Now, you can't get access to that. Make your way into the help desk, okay? And just say who you are. And Mike will walk you through what you need to do to verify that you are the winner. Okay? So I'm going to be picking one winner from here. Okay? I'm then going to do... I'm going to do it for the silver members, the gold members, and the platinum members on the website. I'm going to randomly pick someone. So keep an eye out on your email. I will be letting you guys know in videos anyway who the winner is. But keep an eye out because you'll be revealed as a winner. And of course, <clears throat> in the new year, I'm going to do a live stream for the Platinum members. I'm going to be giving away these Traders Reality Kicks right here, okay? So these haven't been worn. These are fresh out of the box, handmade. They've even got the bloody bit of paper in there, okay? So I'm going to be giving that away to the Platinum members anyways, all right? Cool. Are we ready? Yeah? <clears throat> Okay, yes, anyways, are we ready, guys? Yeah? Can women get the kicks too? Of course they can. Who, If a woman wins the kicks, she can, she can win. If she's got a size nine foot, that's UK, right? I think it's 44, 43. If she's got a size nine, then all right, we're dealing with a very interesting woman. She's got a very big foot like that, you know? But anyways, here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> uh, do those are this bro? What? 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 Where have you woken up, man? What's wrong with you? Into the cosmos? Who's pissed you off today, bro? With your negative comment, man. Mad days. What's wrong with this guy? Anyways, pay you ten k to wear them. <laughs> You know what? I hope you win them, bro. I hope you win them. I really do hope you win them. All right, then. Here we go. Let's roll with it. Are we ready? Tell me when to stop. I'm going to keep on pressing this. Tell me when to stop, ladies and gentlemen. You tell me when to stop. I'll tell you what. How many likes we at? 436 likes. Get to 500 likes and I'll stop at 500 likes. Yeah, come on. You ready? <laughs> 500 likes. I see 438. I'm going to stop at 500 likes. <laughs> Rig them rugs. I'm going to keep on going. Yeah, you got tomorrow's expiry as well. Here we go. 441 likes. 481 likes. Three, two, one. Once I see it turn to 500 likes. Here we go. 481. It's probably going to do it in a second. There you go. Bang. 192. Okay, then. 192. I've got to try and find now. 192. I'm going to pull that comment over here. All right. Let me pull up Bitcoin's price. 
I'm going to go into 192. Here we go. So, <clears throat> right. So that puts us where are we at. Count 43, 114, 19, 12, 91, 92. Come on. God, man, this is painful. This is. All right, then. Wow. Come on, Tino, man, you slow person. 192, it was, right. 193, 192. All right, then. So I've got the person's name right here. Here we go. So 192, that's where we are right here. I'm going to reveal the person's name. Bang. Matthew. Math. Whoa, 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 hold on. Let's have a look. Here we are. Matthew. H-S-U. Oh, you know what? I hope it is who I think it is. Matthew H-S-U. I hope it's you, Matthew. If I think it's him. I hope it's him. Matthew, are you here in the live? Let me know. This is rigged, man. What's he talking about? Come on, man. It's me, yeah. Dimuth J. Singh. All right, cool, cool. All right, because your name's Matthew, bro. All right, then. It's me. It's me. Everyone's saying it's me. It's me. Okay, then. No worries. It's him. It's all of you. All right, cool. Well, listen, Matthew... W, I, I, I think, I think that's, I think that is someone, you know, I think that is someone, but yeah, well done, Matthew, man, you get to pick the shirt that you want as you are the first winner. So you either get the green vector shirt, which is the exo chart. You get the, the exo shirt, the red vector or the blue or the violet, that bad boy right there. Okay. All right, and well done to you, Matthew, man. Is he in here? Nah, never mind. I think he's in the Discord. Yeah, remember, contact Mike Dutch in the Discord. He's, there you go. It's in the comments right there. It's saying, doesn't matter. Contact Mike via DM in the Discord. All right, so congratulations, Matthew. All right, <laughs> we are all Matthew. All right, then, cool. Well done to Matthew. And remember, guys, on the website, silver, gold, platinum, one of you or three of you are going to receive an email of me reaching out to you saying you've won. All right. So keep an eye out for that little present over this New Year's break. And then going into the start of the new year, Platinum members, we're going to do the live stream with the custom made Traders Reality shoes that apparently into the cosmos says they're absolutely disgusting. Well, that brand must be wearing sandals because he can't really relate to wearing these fire kicks. I'm joking with you, bro. It's all love. Anyways. Um, I heard Iraq was going back to using the DNR. Is it worth investing into? Similar to what happened when Cyprus had its own sterling. Um, but the Cypriot pound was near enough close with the British pound. And what ended up happening was... Well, the UK kind of got a bit scared about that. So they got rid of the British pound. Converted Cyprus into the euro fucking clean them out and yeah but that's another story could be something getting involved in but again you've got to consider what are they going to be transacting on that's the thing you know tino getting rigged and trolled what do you mean tino rigged and trolled i ain't getting trolled bro <laughs> anyways what do you want so where's the gentleman he wants bitcoin price action here we go and then i'm going to let you guys be let's get back to it here we are so let's just go over to exo charts for a split second guys and have a look at where we are with btc with the volume all right cool so what we got <clears throat> um well it says a lot about bitcoin's price action right now oh wow Absolutely zilch. Nothing's happening. No. Nah. Bitcoin is prone to quite bold moves from now going into tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow's a different day. It's a market day tomorrow. But yeah, lots of small contracts 
lots of small contracts. And I've got a relatively decent tick size right here. Um, VWAP's right there. I'm, I'm, I need to look at the profile. Have a look at the profile of Bitcoin over here. So this is the five-day chart. And Bitcoin has, from the day's range, has come away from that point of control at the 43,097. We've been speaking about that point. And value... Okay, so that's where we are in terms of value. We don't really have that much going on in terms of value. We're in the still still in the state of value with Bitcoin, but looking at the bid and the ask, we don't really have that many guys coming on the bids. We just flip over to here. So this is Bitcoin right now. We had an order of 42,400 coming in at 8.6 million. Not really seeing anyone triggering the sales just yet. We've got the big sell contracts at the top side over here, which is a 15 million. But that's at 43,815. But I'm seeing more on the bid side. I mean, down here, it could trigger some more bids at 41,850. But there are guys in here looking to transact. We've got a big order amount right here at 17 million, which has been in the chart for around two days or in the book for two days on Bic on Binance. That's 42,000. I would assume another tap towards 42 could be on the cards just so that they could encourage the idea of all of these players coming in. Because look, 2.95 million was traded at 42,200. But, well, that was the initial order amount, but 15 million got transacted at that point. So everyone was rushing in to get their bids hit at that point on Bitcoin. I'm seeing a sequence of bids coming into play on Bitcoin, which would then only make me assume that we're going to see. I mean, these are liquidation points down here. So there could be the possibility of that. But going into the order flow over here, I mean, you've got liquid liquidation at 43, 44,350 with $2.7 billion worth of short liquidations at that top side zone. Just going over to the live Jenny data feed, we've got this idea over here of very, I mean, guys, come on, man. It's shocking volume across the board. Look, nothing's happening with the altcoin market either. TRB's taken a bit of a mad move, if I'm correct. Let me just see that. TRB, USDT. I'll look at Bonk in a minute, my friend. Look at that. That thing isn't bloody stopping, man. It's not stopping. There's that full recovery of that wick. It just doesn't stop. Is it? Yeah, man, look at this. Look at this is just going for it. Not stopping at all. That is wonderful for any TRB holders, considering it was, what, $16. Not bad, man. Not a bad coin. Okay, let me just go into bunk for a second. All right, so there's bunk in terms of, let's have a look at it here. I mean, it's starting to hold out. All right, so it's holding out. I've got the recovery of the blue vector candle, which they've tapped, and now they're coming away from it. This is the 15-hour time frame itself. When you're looking at bunk, you want to look at where it's being mentioned across the board. Do we have any interest of it? BSV is up 721%. Because of tweet and volume gainers, WRX, SKL, Bonk really isn't coming into play. Um, not really seeing anything happening here. Watch lists. No, biggest price movers in the last 24 hours. Um, not really seeing anything. Um, yeah, ELA's top five exchange inflows coming in. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything coming into play with Bonk other than what we see now. Let me just go over to Coin. Yeah, 100x. Let me just refresh this. This should give me a little bit of insight. Yeah, nothing's happening for Bunk in the last 24 hours. Um, we've got an even amount of shorts and longs and open interest. People are kind of confused as where to where is price going. Yeah, so on that basis, man, if we just go into price action for Bunk itself, looks like it wants to try and climb up a little bit. Red vector candle region. Again, look, this is not a... These moves that I'm projecting are not based on, oh my God, Bonk's going to shoot all the way up. I mean, there is a possibility it could go all the way back up towards this point up here. Happy days. If that's going to be the case, you'd need to see it clear out some significant points, especially the psychological ranges that you've got over here. All right. That's what you'd be looking for, for them to clear. All right. But just be careful with it because you, it's it's a binary code coin. Look at it. There's too many zeros, man. Just be careful with it. Um... Two dot. Okay, then CFX. Let's have a look. CFX USDT. So quite a choppy coin. It's trading sideways, but <clears throat> you'd be anticipating a break from some perspective. Okay, so all right. So they like to do this. Okay, then 
Go to the four hour time frame on this bad boy. Zoom out. <coughs> All right, it's very light. So it's obviously reacting to news. Okay, then. Just be, just be mindful with this one. It spends a lot of time in consolidation. What you're really looking for. So the idea of this coin itself is on the basis that this vector candle region where they initially moved price up from seems to be finding resistance here, 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 and here. So what that's saying to me is the guys who stepped in at this point are not really stepping in anymore. They're just getting liquidated or more so being pushed back into the idea of break even and closing off positions, which is initially leading prices down lower. So what I'm expecting from this is a nice little sharp move down to try and come back up because the second they break this point, which currently sits at the 20 cents and eight zone, then we'd want to see green vector candles piercing this point with the success of them taking out this area over here, which sits at the 22 cent mark. So then we're looking for this structure. Breakout, break one, breakout. That's what we're looking for. They could break that zone, consolidate, break out again, because they could be triggering these guys over here. These guys here. Because this area was consistent with them trapping traders short, selling into the liquidity where people were buying. So the market needs to do that again in this area over here. That's what logic says. How do we justify it? Back into the imbalance of the red vector. So just keep an eye on that. Yeah, that 19 zone. Smack on the number, or 20 cent zone right there. Okay. Um, what have we got? Let's have a look at Ada. L D L D O. Let's have a look at L D O. So nice play right there, L D O. Okay, so the good thing with L D O. Two zones to consider with this one. It's quite volatile, right? So what you really want to do, you've got these two ranges right now. So this range right here with the blue vectors is where they effectively trap traders. Same logic as the last coin that I spoke about. Trapping traders here, okay? Mark it down. Come back into it. Sell off. Come back down. Comes back into it. Sells off from it after they initially broke it, but they came back down and tapped out. That's what you're looking for in the last coin that I just said, okay? That's the structure right there. That is crazy. Look at how they've done it on this one, okay? Go back into that coin. It's exactly what we need it to do, okay? That's exactly what we need it to do. So LDO's already done it, so we then say to ourselves, okay, what do we expect? Well, there are two points in this because it's quite volatile. Two points in the chart that you've got to be looking out for. This point right here, which sits at the $2.54 mark. And then the second point is right here at the $2.78 mark. Why is this important? Because right now, price is going back into that point. So this area is consistent with them initiating longs to get people to go long, okay? You take the midpoint of the vector candle, and then you go into that, go straight down to the wick. That's the midpoint of the vector, all right? So you would assume that they're going to start getting busy at that point. You can already justify that because the price has come back down into this zone with the violet vector candle, and it instantly reversed from that point on the creation of the violet vector, right? So the logic says that you want to see this candle come back down into this range. You could get even more technical about it and then cross again with this area where... What I'm drawing for you guys is I'm matching up the points of interest on the vector candles, the vector opens and the vector closes. And the reason being is because if you go back in the charts, you'll notice that every point of the vector of the open and the close of the candlestick, not the wick, okay, you will find that price does something at these points. Okay, you've, you've heard me mention this before. And this, this is what my setups are primarily based on when it comes to the platinum members on the website and the gold members on the website as well. So this is an example of that, okay? Um, <clears throat> what else you got here? RSI reset on Sol. 
Yeah, and green vector now. Let's have a look at Sol. Here we go. Here we are. So they're, they're starting to do something very interesting right now. Solana's come back up into that vector candle region as well. Happy days. Okay, then. Cool. Matic. Yeah, it's done its business. ETH is starting to come up. Okay, so this looks very interesting. Let's just justify this for a second. Why are we seeing so much movement right now? Here we go. So we could get the movement back into the VWAP, which will take us towards, that'll take us towards 42,940, as long as that sustains itself. All right? Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I'm going to bounce. I've got to go. But listen, mad love and respect. Thank you so much. It's been a mad year, man. It really has. And I just bid you all the best. I won't be live now until the start of the new year. So just make sure you enjoy yourselves. Try not and take too much commitment in the market and trade. It's going to get volatile. But if you do make some money, just pay yourselves, man. No one went broke taking a profit. All right? God bless every single one of you. Mad love to anyone. Got love for you into the cosmos. I'll save these shoes for you, my friend. All right? <laughs> take care of yourselves, gang. Mark Dutch, no problem. Mad love to you, my bro. Take care of yourselves, gang. Dr. Vector, Savage Traders, thank you, man. Take care of yourselves, gang, and I'll see you in the new year. Mad love and respect. Peace.